Alexa, a mother, is facing a criminal abuse charge for punishing her son, which left him with serious burns. The Bluegrass Airport is stepping up their security. Coming up, we'll explain what a travel alert from the State Department means for the many passengers who are flying through Lexington. It can cut down valuable seconds in a life or death situation. Tonight, how Lexington firefighters are training to help people in remote areas of the county. This is WKYT News at 5.30. Good evening. A Lexington mother facing serious charges after police say she abused her child. Police say Jamisha Clay put her toddler in scalding water as a form of punishment. WKYT's Hillary Thornton is in Lexington where Clay answered to a judge this afternoon. She is our top story at 530. Several family members were in the courtroom this afternoon for Jamisha Clay's video arraignment. Who has the child? He's at the hospital right now. Investigators say last week Clay abused her two-year-old son by placing him in scalding hot water as a form of punishment, resulting in second and third degree burns to his lower extremities, sending the toddler to Cincinnati Children's Hospital. A family member says while they do not want to talk about the arrest, they do not think Clay's actions were intentional. At Clay's arraignment this afternoon, her public defender noted that she is a low risk and has several family members willing to be responsible for her if she's released from jail. All right, well, here's the best I'll do. I'm going to third party. It was not an easy decision for Judge Julie Goodman granting Clay release under a specific set of conditions. She's on home detention, ankle monitor. Pending this matter, the only places she can go are to her attorney and court. I do not want her at her place of employment based on what she does and no contact. With her child. Clay's arrest citation does say she works at a local nursing home. However, officials there tell us she was let go last week and she worked in their kitchen, never having any interaction with any of their residents. In Lexington, Hillary Thornton, WKYT. Clay's attorney entered a not guilty plea for the charge. She is scheduled to be back in court December 1st. It's considered one of the busiest travel days of the year. The Thanksgiving travel rush is well underway, and airport leaders are taking extra security precautions to make sure everyone stays safe this holiday. WKYT's Mark Barber is at Bluegrass Airport. He shows us how airport officials are increasing security. In light of the recent terror attacks in Paris, the Bluegrass Airport is taking extra precautions to protect passengers today on what is one of the busiest travel days of the year. However, passengers may not see those extra safety precautions because they are all happening behind the scenes. The lines to check baggage are long, but they stretch even longer for security. Safety concerns are weighing on the minds of many passengers today who are flying through the airport. The State Department is warning those travelers about possible terror attacks. They have issued a worldwide travel alert because groups like ISIS are continuing to plan terror attacks in multiple regions. According to the State Department, caution is needed, especially right now, because this is the start of the holiday season. Airport officials say while passengers probably will not see anything out of the ordinary today, there is a lot of security work happening out of sight. A lot of what you're going to see is behind the scenes, so that's information that's considered sensitive. All the partners here know what their role is and how to, to do that, and so that's all takes place. Thank goodness without our passengers even knowing, so hopefully we provide a very smooth experience for them. The Transportation Security Administration, the Department of Homeland Security, and the Federal Aviation Administration are all working together behind behind the scenes today, working to keep all travelers safe at all times. In Lexington, Mark Barber, WKYT. Airport officials recommend arriving at the airport 60 to 90 minutes before your flight. And that way you'll have plenty of time to check in and get through that security. And if you are planning on traveling tonight, you will not be alone on the roads. You are taking a live look now at Interstate 75 in Madison County, where traffic is pretty steady right now. People getting along okay. Keep checking WKYT for the very latest updates on traffic in and out of town. Looks like a pretty drive as they the head their way. Sun is setting. Yeah, and the good news, if you are traveling today or tomorrow, it looks like the weather is going to hold up and be pretty nice. Yeah, we're tracking mild temperatures and clear skies, but Chris. <laughs> 
Bailey, chief meteorologist, says there are some changes coming this weekend. Yeah, those will roll into town late Friday and especially Saturday into Sunday, looking awfully soggy as of right now. So let's enjoy what Mother Nature is giving us out there this afternoon. And you could not pick a better travel day uh, for the busiest travel day of the season. Locally, we're into the 50s, mix of sun and some high clouds. A little earlier, sun is now setting, but it is not setting on the absolute nice weather conditions, not only for tonight, but into the day tomorrow as well. You see some of those high clouds that continue to stream on in. Uh, cold front is well to our west as of now. That's not going to get in here until we go into Friday night. Winds are gusting out ahead of that. Cold air behind that is going to struggle to reach central and eastern Kentucky, so that's something we'll keep an eye on. And as of now, roadways are in pretty good shape. Officer Don will have a check on that coming up here in just a little bit. But again, that big area of low pressure is what we will be tracking as we go into the rest of the holiday weekend. Your Thanksgiving, guys, you like today. We're just going to double dip and replay it again tomorrow. Seven-day forecast with all those wet changes when I come back in about 10 minutes. Thank you, Chris. In a life or death situation, every minute can be critical for first responders. One way they can get to people quickly is by medical helicopter. As our Sean Moody shows us, Lexington Fire and EMS crews are training to help people in remote areas of Fayette County. Getting to an emergency here in the city has its own obstacles, like getting through traffic. But when it comes to serving the people of rural Fayette County, first responders have to deal with hilly and it's curvy roads and you know they're not marked for the most part and when emergency crews get through that they see this as soon as i heard the screech i heard you know within two or three minutes i heard you know sirens and everything else coming this is what terry squire saw when he came out of his house lexington fire and ems responding to an injury accident on walnut hill road an 11 year old girl was thrown from this suv an ambulance took her to the hospital, but in cases like this, the first responders have to quickly decide if the patient needs the medevac, even though they might just be minutes from the city. In the country, uh, even in a place at the edges of the county like this, uh, transport times could be uh, significantly longer. Lexington firefighters are in the Raven Run Nature Sanctuary to get the proper training on creating a safe landing zone if a patient does need to be flown out. They know that all important golden hour is at hand. From here uh, to uh, UK, for example, uh, transporting a patient from this area, not including the time to patient, would be upwards of 30 minutes. After calling in a helicopter from Montgomery County, two counties away, it took 11 minutes to get there to land, cutting down on time within that golden hour to serve all of Fayette County. In Lexington, Sean Moody, WKYT. And police say the 11 year old who was thrown from the SUV was not wearing a seat belt. We're told her injuries are serious but non life threatening. The driver was arrested on outstanding warrants. An administration error on this year's property tax bills is expected to be discussed at council meeting this Tuesday. City leaders say the printed rate on this year's tax forms is less than what the council approved. Leaders say the cost of sending new bills would be more expensive. An agreement was reached that would allow the clerk's office and the city to make up the $71,000 difference. The council will decide whether to approve that agreement on Tuesday. A Southern Kentucky community is coming together to celebrate Thanksgiving. The principal at Whitley County High School helped organize a meal for the town. Churches, organizations, and clubs provided the food for hundreds of people, and volunteers helped prepare and serve it. Principal Bob Lawson says he wanted to show that the school and community could come together during the holidays. So it's building what we want in terms of service, hearts of gratitude, thankfulness. It's just a win-win all the way around. The principal says some of the volunteers worked all night to prepare the turkey. He says the food was paid for through donations. There's a new kind of gift card on shelves for Black Friday this year. Some stores are selling gift cards that you don't spend in a retailer, but to own a piece of the retailer in stock. It's an innovative way to invest, but financial experts warn it may not be that savvy of a deal. At this grocery store outside Washington, D.C., the freshest items on the shelf include Coca-Cola and Apple. Not the products, but stock in the companies, being sold for the first time as gift cards. One shopper was intrigued when he was shown the cards. Yeah, I'm definitely interested. The gift cards rolled out in October at major retailers, including Wegmans, Safeway, Kmart, Office Max, and others. So far, the cards can be used to buy stock in 20 big-name companies. I'm scratching off the code here. The founder and CEO of Stockpile, a Silicon Valley startup, created the idea. 
We're bringing Wall Street to America. People have never been able to own a stock and get started as quickly as they can here. On a plastic card? <laughs> I'm the old school. Sorry about that. There's really more steps to the process. New York financial writer Greg Brewer points out the fees can be the equivalent of up to 20%. The recipient must open a brokerage account and can redeem it for something other than stock, despite the gift giver's intention. And there's a 99 cent fee to sell the stock. As an investment, I would say that this is a pass for the vast majority of people. I think it's here to stay uh, because we're seeing growth. In fact, Stockpile plans to add even more retailers next year. The stock gift cards are sold in denominations of $25, $50, or $100. The person buying the gift card pays most of the fees on top of the cost of the card. Stockpile says that so far most of its customers are those over 30 years old buying for people under 30. Governor-elect Matt Bevin's inaugural parade will pay tribute to several first responders. Coming up, we'll tell you who will be honored during the ceremony. I'm Bill Bryant. Lexington Mayor Jim Gray gives few hints about whether he might run for Congress after Matt Jones opts out of the race. And another call for the head of the state retirement system to step aside. The bottom line is ahead.